You want to come be in the video, kitten? Is she sleeping with her eyes open? I think that's a no on the video. Hello and welcome or welcome back. Today I am going to be decluttering my cat Danny's stuff. I've had a couple of requests from you guys to talk about pet supply decluttering and so it's been on my list of things to tackle for a while. So I've gathered all of Danny's things into one place. They're all waiting in my kitchen for us to tackle in just a minute. But before we jump right into that, there are a couple of things that I want to share with you in case you too are interested in decluttering your pet supplies. The first thing I want to mention and almost get out of the way is that pets need things. Now, I have a five-year-old cat. You might have seen her in some of my videos, but she's full of energy. She likes to play. She also has asthma, and so she needs certain medications, and she's a cat, so she needs things like a litter box and food bowls that she can reach her tiny little head into. So she has her own requirements. Now, I know that when many of us first uh, approach minimalism, it can be really easy to want to go like full steam ahead and get rid of as much as possible. But I think it's really important when it comes to our pets to realize that they have their own needs and they're going to need certain supplies. And there are certain things that are just sort of non-negotiable. Now, of course, I have some tips in just a moment for how you can pare down your pet supplies, but I think it's really important right off the bat to accept that pets need their own things. The next thing I suggest is to learn your pet's preferences and get rid of or avoid the things that they don't like. Now, I'm mostly talking about toys, but you could definitely apply the same principle to lots of other things. Now, on the topic of toys, depending on your pet's personality and preferences, they may need more things to keep them happy and entertained. But not all toys are created equal and your pet likely has some preferences that you can take notice of and learn from and avoid wasting your time and money and their attention on things that they don't actually like. So with my cat, with Danny, we've learned that she really prefers cardboard scratchers. We've tried um, rope scratchers and carpet scratchers, but she, she hates them. She doesn't like them at all. We've wanted to try those because they are less messy, but she doesn't give them the time of day. So now we know that she prefers cardboard scratchers and we don't have to waste our money on any other kind of scratcher because we know what she likes. She also doesn't like ball toys or things that roll in general or anything that's battery operated because I think she can hear the motor and she understands that it's fake. So we've taken notice of a few things and now we know what to avoid. The next thing I want to mention is time over toys. Now I learned this piece of wisdom from another YouTube video of this couple who had downsized to a van and they were living in the van with their two year old and there was a clip in one of their videos that said kids need time, not toys. Now I don't have kids, but I thought that was really sweet and likely very true. And I think the same principle can apply to our pets. I know that it's really tempting whenever I go into a pet store to want to buy all sorts of things for Danny to show her that I love her and show her my appreciation for her. But I think much of the time she prefers the attention that I can give her over any physical things or physical toys that I could give her. Now, don't get me wrong. Some toys are healthy for a pet to have. Now, if you have an iguana, I have no idea what your iguana wants. Maybe it wants new sticks. It gets tired of the old sticks and it wants new sticks. I don't really know, but cats and dogs appreciate attention. My cat likes to cuddle and she really likes it when my husband and I play with her. And in fact, one of her favorite playtime activities is when we drape a robe over her and just glide the tassel or the tie of the robe over the top of it. And she goes crazy for this and it doesn't involve any toys. She's a little monster. Hello, kitten. You having fun? Now, depending on your pet's personality, they may need or want more toys to play with, but oftentimes attention and care can go a lot further than toys. The last thing I want to mention is in regards to what to do with all of the supplies you declutter from your pet supplies. I know that 
sort of a thing that comes top of mind is donate it to an animal shelter. And that can be a great option. But what I recommend you do before you just dump all of your unneeded pet supplies at the animal shelter is to give them a call ahead of time or talk to them in person whenever you're bringing uh, items to be donated and ask them what they need because sometimes there are uh, rules and regulations at different animal shelters that might prevent them from being able to make use of supplies that you have. For example, I think basically every animal shelter will not accept open food, even if it's a giant bag of dry cat food that you've only taken a tiny bit out of, if it's opened, they can't use it. I also know that at least some shelters have partnerships with particular brands, like say a particular brand of cat litter. And so if you donate cat litter that is not of the brand that they have a partnership with, it might wind up in the trash. So doing a little due diligence and calling ahead to see if they can actually use the items can keep those from ending up in landfill. Another thing you can do if you have pet supplies that you no longer need is offer them to people who foster animals. You can go to your local humane society or animal shelter and ask them if they have Facebook groups or mailing lists for foster families and reach out to them to see if they need any of the supplies that you have. And with that, let's get into decluttering my own pet supplies. All right, I gathered most of her stuff onto this countertop. This isn't everything. We still have her dry f or her wet food down here. She decided to go inside the cabinet a moment ago. All right, can I close that? Great, thank you. Um, we also have her extra litter and dry food in our pantry. If you don't have an airtight rolly container with a stainless steel scoop, I really recommend them for uh, dry pet food. And then of course she's a cat, so she also has a litter box, which doesn't usually live here, but it is displaced to this location until the renovation is complete. Got a lot of stuff, don't you? And so this is everything else. We have um, some medications and asthma related things back here. This is in case she gets a UTI her inhaler, a humidifier, and a nebulizer for asthma emergencies, um, the little uh, medication that goes inside her inhaler, and then more uh, medications in here. And if your pet also needs medications and you use a pill pocket um, for the medications, I really recommend these little vacuum seal canisters from Ikea. They were a couple of bucks and they save us a lot of time um, zipping and unzipping uh, the pill pocket packet. Um, what else do we have? We have a sweater that we attempt to put on her once a year and my husband and I usually lose some skin in the process. Some training pads that we didn't end up needing, catnip, um, a battery powered wobbly that she only uses if we don't use the battery, if we just manually slide it around on the ground, a food puzzle, um, more pill pockets, hairball treats that she completely rejected, some loose toys, vitamins, catnip bubbles that she got for Christmas and didn't like, another wobbly um, cat wipes, uh, which we actually got. We actually got the cat wipes and this flea collar for a feral cat that we had to trap because we noticed it had an infection. Um, so I can definitely get rid of those as well as her current cardboard scratchy that she's done a number on and this reversible um, scratchy that she completely rejected. So hopefully we can put a dent in this. Right, kitten. All right, this is everything that we're keeping minus that flea collar. That flea collar is going in the trash. A lot of these things are asthma related. I'm keeping her nebulizer and her humidifier even though we don't use them that often just in case she does have asthma and it's pretty serious. So um, I want to have those things around and we're keeping her scratchy, um, some treats, some toys, and oh, this. If you, uh, if your cat likes ch chasing string things, this little mouse on a string is by a company called Go Cat, I believe, and this is one of her favorite toys. In fact, it comes with um, a bunch of different attachments. This is called Da Bird, and it's one of their best sellers and actually kind of like floats through the air. So she loves those things. Um, but this is what we are keeping, and over here is a bag of 13 items plus the um, flea collar that we're getting rid of. 
that are going. So toys that she didn't like, again, round things, things that roll she doesn't like. She didn't like the scratchy and just a bunch of other things we didn't need. And so I am pretty happy with this. All right, it is almost Danny's dinner time, so I'm going to end this here, but I hope you've enjoyed this little declutter and I hope the tips come in handy if you need to get rid of some of your own pet supplies. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.